In recent years, a lot of literature has come out that sort of tries to understand the connection between health and wealth. And what, what do you think that might be? What do you think the connection between having extra resources and having good health might be? Well, uh, traditionally, a lot of economists look at it this way. They see health and wealth as being connected in sort of a circle. So at some point, a little bit of health can increase your wealth, or a little bit of wealth can increase your health. And it's sort of a self-feeding circle. So as you become more wealthy, you become more healthy. As you become more healthy, you become more wealthy. And so this is kind of the traditional understanding of this. Now, economists have looked at this and said there has to be something else to it, but there hasn't been a lot of research that has really come up with any other sort of solution. So right now, at the moment, this is how we understand the connection between health and wealth as sort of a, self, um, a self-affirming circle, so where health and wealth work together to increase each other's sort of influence in someone's life or something like that. Now, what effect might that have on a person on the ground somewhere in the world? Well, let's take an example. Let's look at a family. And let's say that they are farmers, and maybe they are in sub-Saharan Africa. And they have here fields that they tend together as a large family group. So let's say it's a big kind of extended family of farmers um, like you see really anywhere in the world, like people from the United States, through Asia, through Europe, through Africa. You find this all over the place, that families have farms that they run together. So maybe this family has maybe a few brothers or uncles, people like that. Maybe a f their wives. And then maybe they have a few kids as well. And let's make some kids here. All right. So there we go. We've got this big family here. And let's say from this crop, if everything goes well, so if the crop has a good year, it makes money. So they take their stuff to the market, they sell it as a, as a group, and they divide the money out amongst themselves. And in the end, they maybe are able to make $2 a piece. So if you divide that out over the entire family, they're able to make, each person is able to make $2. That puts them sort of in the upper levels of um, sort of like the upper level of poverty in many countries. So low poverty, like if you're a very poor person, is below $1 a day. So that is, that is very poor no matter how you cut it. And $2 a day is still very poor, but it's definitely something that is somehow, it's survivable. There's definitely a lot more that you can do with that $2 a day than you can do with $1 a day. But that's if everything goes well. Say one year you have a drought, and maybe all these crops don't work out for you. Maybe you only have a 50% yield for that day, for that year. Well, now you've been reduced to this $1 a day. And let's say the next year you have the same thing, except this time it's even more. Maybe the, maybe the drought is continuing and deepening. You've now dropped into the minus a dollar a day range, and this puts you at really great risk. So imagine, for one thing, you're not able to eat very well. So let's just imagine then that all of these people are malnourished. So we're going to go through, and these little yellow dots mean that everyone is not eating enough food. Well, being malnourished puts you at risk of getting lots of diseases. And so, especially for children, puts you at about a two-thirds risk, um, higher risk of getting very sick from something. So you've got, out of these six children, four of them could potentially get very sick. And also for women, especially, uh, malnourishment is a big problem. Uh, malnutrition leads to anemia, which leads to higher death rates for pregnant mothers. So here you're putting the women, especially in this group, at higher risk. The men are also at risk, but not quite at the same kind of risk because of because men are traditionally 
physically a little bit more robust and able to survive these kind of things because they don't have as much thing many things taxing on their bodies women have uh, traditionally a lot more taxing sort of um, influences on their bodies uh, worldwide so here you're putting a lot of people in the family then at risk because of this lower income you're not able as able to ha collect resources and survive as a family now let's say this continues and let's say um, maybe this guy here gets pneumonia and he is out and let's say we get two cases of anemia among the mothers uh, that maybe also are connected with some other diseases you have a few kids getting sick well now even if the crops are good it's going to put a lot more strain on the other people and you could get things like exhaustion among the members of the family that are still healthy so maybe you have these guys are now working a lot harder to keep things going so the blue could mean some sort of exhaustion and the exhaustion could also then put you at higher risk of being sick in some way so you've got people who are again more likely to get sick from something and eventually all of these things could lead to members of the family dying um, you know this disease here could turn into something very critical this person could die from some sort of pneumonia or something related to their exhaustion and malnourishment these women could uh, give birth uh, or get HIV or something along those lines um, and that could increase their risk of death as well and children in the developing world especially children under five have also a much higher risk of death um, especially when mixed with things like malnutrition and other diseases so these people are all at high risk once they've dropped below this two dollar um, sort of area and into the one dollar range um, it's really putting them at very high risk of being becoming very sick um, because they just don't have that many resources at hand to fight off these sort of things if you get sick and you don't have the money to get medication for it or you get sick and you don't have enough money to even feed yourself well, then you have a major problem and so that is where really a lot of scientists and social scientists and um, development thinkers are trying to get in and think about okay how can we improve health in a way that will improve wealth and how can we improve wealth in a way that will improve health and these are the big questions that we're thinking about now in the development world we've been thinking about them for a long time but luckily in the last couple of years people have stopped thinking about development just as people having things but really in in terms of people being able to um, reach their full potential and empowering them to uh, ha have the own their own resources in order to um, solve this problem on their own so that is kind of an introduction to the the health wealth connection and why wealth and health are so tightly connected you can learn more about development and health at allversity.org